What is in day seven? Oh my gosh. It's Stephanie. Oh, oh there good. she is. She mm. is so cute. To be honest with you, breakfast is the best part of my day. There are so many delicious things that you can make for breakfast and I love things that can bake in the oven and you can just heat up on a cold winter morning. Things like baked oatmeal, French toast casserole, um, not I know this isn't baking, but even like pancakes and waffles. Just so good to have when it's really, really cold outside. And today I'm going to showcase two of them for you. I'm about to do a meal prep session making apple cinnamon baked oatmeal in a French toast casserole using brioche bread. Now these could be used as a Christmas morning breakfast, maybe a Thanksgiving morning breakfast, even when it's cold outside and there's no holiday, you just wanna celebrate with a nice, big plate of oatmeal. So what do you say we get into it? I will show you how they are made. I am starting off with the apple cinnamon baked oatmeal. As you can see, it uses very simple ingredients. So I've got the apples, applesauce, milk, oats. I have walnuts in it. You don't have to use walnuts, but all you have to do is just mix all this together and bake it. I've got the oven preheating, so let's get to it. First things first, I'm going to core and slice up the apple. So as you can see, my apple core is very well loved, but it still works. So I'm just going to continue using it until it breaks. And I'm not usually perfect with it. Sometimes I keep the seeds and stuff in there, but I think I did pretty good. The easiest way for me to dice up the apples really small is to cut it into rings like this first, and then I will cut them into smaller pieces. Now, if you wanted to, you could peel these apples before cutting them. I don't really care either way, so I'm just gonna leave the skin on. But I'll usually put two on top of each other like this, slice them one way, and then turn them around and slice them the other way. And that gets them diced really small. So then these are just going to go in a large bowl. After that, we're going to add the dry ingredients. Next up, like I said, the dry ingredients. So I'm going to add the walnuts, the oats, baking powder, cinnamon. I'm going to take these because they're kind of big. I'm just going to slightly break them into smaller pieces so that it mixes in a little bit better. If you don't like walnuts, you could add in pecans or your other favorite kind of nuts. You don't even have to add nuts but I am adding walnuts because it gives a good amount of healthy fats, omega-3s, unsaturated fats. Those are both known to help lower cholesterol, which is what we're trying to do in this family. So every little bit helps. Oats are high in fiber. Fiber also can help lower cholesterol. So this is like a treasure trove of healthiness. You've got the fiber, you have the unsaturated fats, and then you will have a little bit of protein from the oats and the milk, so that helps too. Next up is the wet ingredients. Now I will say I was a little surprised to see that there were, uh, there's no eggs in this recipe. Usually when I make baked oatmeal, I have eggs in it. Now I think there's one other time where I made a baked oatmeal without eggs, so it's not a huge deal. It will still work without the eggs. It was just interesting when I looked at it. Now, one substitution I am making, it calls for a fourth cup of butter, but instead I'm gonna add a fourth cup of olive oil. The reasoning is because I wanted to add some more unsaturated fat to it, because again, like I said, it helps to lower cholesterol. 
butter has saturated fat, which is not a bad thing, but I try to get a good balance in there. And I'm adding honey to this, but you could also use maple syrup instead if you wanted. I think I say this every time that I make baked oatmeal, but it is really wet right now. However, it will bake into the oatmeal. It will be nice and soft, almost cake-like when it comes out of the oven. So that is done. We need to bake this for about 35 to 40 minutes. Let's get that in and then we'll start on the French toast casserole. Here we go. This is the bread of all breads to make a French toast casserole. This is chocolate chip brioche loaf from Aldi. Now I've, I've bought this before and I've actually made regular French toast out of this. And I will link that video down below for you. But I figured, hey, what do you think this would be like in a French toast casserole? I mean, basically the same thing, right? So while the baked oatmeal is cooking, let's go ahead and get this ready. I'm going to use the entire loaf of bread for this, but what I'm going to do is just slice this into cubes. So I'll do a small stack of them at a time. And I like the brioche bread because it's thicker. You could also use like regular French loaf or like maybe your favorite type of thick bread. But yeah, when I made this as actual French toast, holy cow, it was seriously the best ever. Now this one may be more of like a special holiday breakfast. Um, this does probably have quite a bit more sugar than other, other breakfasts, which is okay. Each slice of this bread, I looked at the nutrition info, it has five grams of added sugar per slice. And that is okay. It's always good to have things in moderation. Um, I'm not sure if I would eat this every single day. However, it is really, really good as a treat. So here's where I'm going to do things a little bit differently than the recipe that I have. So my, the recipe calls for a fourth cup of sugar in this as well. However, since the brioche has chocolate chips and it already has some sugar in it, I'm going to skip the sugar in this. And then also, sometimes people like to put syrup on top of their French toast casserole when they're ready to eat it. So I figured I don't really need that extra fourth cup of sugar in there. Now this recipe does say to let it soak for a couple hours or even overnight. I'm not going to do that. I typically don't when it comes to French toast casserole, probably because I'm a little impatient. 
but you know, it's okay. It'll still turn out good. It also calls for like a cinnamon sugar mixture on top, which you certainly could, but like I said, I think there's enough sugar in here already. So I'm just going to leave it like it is. So that looks pretty good. We have 22 minutes left on the baked oatmeal. This bakes for 35 minutes. I gotta clean up the kitchen. This is a combination of breakfast dishes from this morning as well as all the delicious baking that I just did. So the one good thing about putting things in the oven is that you have time before it comes out to um, get all the stuff cleaned up. So let's work on some dishes. Oh man, this looks amazing. I actually had to put it in for an extra five minutes because it was still a little liquidous inside. So it baked for 40 minutes instead of 35. And it still feels a tad on the soft side, but the knife is coming out clean. And it doesn't have to be exactly cake-like. I mean, when I cut it out, sometimes it will be kind of firmer. You can actually cut it into slices, but sometimes you just have to scoop it. I might have to do that. And you know what? It might be because there are no eggs in it. We still have a few more minutes on the French toast casserole. So we'll just wait until that's done and see what that looks like. All right, this right here is smelling amazing. Oh my goodness. And it is nice and crispy on top. I don't feel anything like uh, wet eggs or anything like that. So this one was also 35 minutes. I didn't have to put it in for any longer than that. So what I'm going to do is wait until these are cooled off. I'm gonna wait about an hour or so and then I will cut them up and put them into containers. I'm so excited to dig into these. Now, these have a different number of servings just because I kind of calculated everything for you all. I am cutting the baked oatmeal into six servings and then the French toast casserole will have eight servings. And that's just because of like the number of calories and protein and things like that. So the baked oatmeal has about 320 something per serving while serving six and then the french toast casserole has about 300 or so serving eight now you could i mean change it around if you if this is not enough for you and you want to make it serve four i mean go for it if you need to make it serve eight to make it have less calories then that's okay too so i'm just going to put these in a meal prep container. I can probably fit about three, three of these in each container. So that's gonna help save on space. And I can tell that the baked oatmeal is a little on the soft side, which is okay. Sometimes I like to put my baked oatmeal in a bowl and put a little bit of milk in it as well. I don't know if any of you do that and I never thought of doing it before, but I think I saw somebody else do it once. I'm like, hmm, I think I should try it. And I did, and holy cow, it was really good. I do that a lot with my banana bread baked oatmeal, and I'll put it in a bowl with a little bit of milk and slice bananas on top. Maybe a little bit of overload with the bananas, but it is still really, really good. So yeah, this is kind of falling apart, which is okay. Not a huge deal, because you're meant to eat it with a fork, not necessarily pick it up and eat it. Okay, this is still a little on the warm side, so we'll keep this uh, out on the counter for a while. And then we get to do the same thing with the French toast casserole. If you remember, I did not add 
a lot of sugar to these. This one I didn't add any sugar at all. And then with the baked oatmeal, I added like a third cup of honey. A lot of that is because we like to add maple syrup to this, like when we're ready to eat it. So that kind of just reduces the amount of sugar just because I knew we were gonna add syrup to it. Now, even though this serves eight, this is still some pretty good sized servings. Now I love these recipes because they're easy to make and like I said, they are so good on a winter morning. Now, this in and of itself may not be enough breakfast for you. I highly recommend adding a protein source to go with this. That could be something as simple as scrambled eggs, maybe some sausage links, cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, something that is going to give you the protein you need because if all you eat is this, that may not be enough food, first of all, and there's not a lot of protein in that to begin with. Protein helps to keep you full throughout the day. So the more protein you eat, the better typically. So I highly recommend adding something to this. Leave me a comment and tell me what is your favorite winter breakfast. If you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and do so right now and like this video and ring that bell. That way you'll be notified when more videos like this come out as well as my other grocery hauls, recipes, and meal planning tips. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you later. Did you know I offer one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching? Whether your goal is to lose weight, eat healthier, or just want to know how to get started, I can help. You can schedule a free weight loss discovery call by using the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I can't wait to chat with you.